Hello everyone, Nick here and welcome to my review of the third War Doctor Big Finish audio box set, Agent, Agents of Chaos, sorry, which I believe is probably my favourite of the box sets with John Hurt in them, my favourite War Doctor box set. My favourite overall so far is Fortune and Fire, the first one from the um, War Doctor Begins series with Jonathan Carley, but of the original four box sets with John Hurt, this one's probably my favourite, although the next one, Casualties of War, does come a close second. I was actually debating it, um, which one was my favourite, which one was my um, second favourite. Um, but of the original four, I think this one just about narrows, uh, narrows past it. So, um, Agents of Chaos. The main story arc this time round is that the Doctor is sent by the Time Lords to Earth in um, 1961, specifically Berlin, to try and stop a Dalek agent called Lara Zanis from changing history so that there is the Doctor's companions and friends who will help him in the future won't exist and, he will, and the Doctor will lose battles and stuff and the Daleks will have a victory over Earth. That's the plot of the first episode, I, but this is the, what kickstarts the series arc. As later on in the series, a, another agent working alongside the Daleks attempts to betray the Time Lords in order for petty revenge, in all honesty. Well, will get to that later. Spoilers for this box set, by the way. And and over the and they try to catch have Cardinal Australia um, Elistra captured by Sontarans, which is the main plot of the second episode. And then attempts to sabotage the Eye of Harmony inside the Battle Tardis, it within, which is the main plot of the third episode. And basically try and get their own back on their own people. And help the and they basically help the Dalek, they're trying to help the Daleks secure a victory for them just out uh, just because they want to get back at the Time Lords. However, the Daleks, of course, have um tricked them into thinking they're doing something else. Um but more on that as we go along. But the main framing for a device over the series, as you could probably gather from that description, is that the Daleks have a couple of of their agents trying to cause um, trouble for, but during the Time War and cause trouble for um, the Time Lords. Let's take a look at each story individually, starting with the first episode, The Shadow Vortex, which guest stars Neve McIntosh as Lara Zanis. Neve McIntosh, of course, you may know as... Madame Vastra in the in the TV series, and she's also Madame Vastra in the audios as well. This story is the only story to see the War Doctor come to Earth, at least in the audios so far. And it's also a pretty interesting Cold War story. The War Doctor has to chase down a Dalek agent on both sides of the Cold uh, of the Berlin Wall, following it being built a few months earlier. So this takes place after August 1961, and but later in 1961 after August. They first end up on the East German side with the East German police and the KGB interrogating them and then later they manage to get themselves to the western side of Berlin where they encounter, um, well according to the back it's MI6 although that's not really clearly stated but it is British, per British military personnel and British scientists working at a um, university lab centre in West Berlin. The West Berlin scientists are trying to make some break scientific breakthroughs and Lara Zanis comes in to try and help them break this, um, uh, make a breakthrough and then use, um, I think it's particles or something, particles with disruptor, I'm not entirely sure. There's a very loud motor bike outside. In order to bring the Daleks to Berlin 1961 and so they can invade um, and try and disrupt time so the war doctor has to try and stop her from doing that and along the way he is joined by a member of the stasi which is east german police we also have a really great performance by big finish regular actress producer writer and director helen goldwyn as professor crane who puts on a really a bit of a posh, posh accent for her character but it works really well with the character she's not a pompous character but it does fit pretty pretty well with a more older and more sensible character, but definitely, you know, she's an um, upper-middle-class British scientist, and Helen Goldwyn does a really great job in the performance. I also have to give a special shout-out to Neve McIntosh for doing a really great villainous performance as Lara Zanis. That, that, is a, that was a great performance in this story. She really knocks out the park, 
and does a really great job. This is a pretty great Earthbound Time War story, which allows the Doc, the War Doctor and the Time War to come to Earth, but only at a small capacity. The Time War would, of course, come to Earth once again in the end of time when Rassilon attempted to have the Time Lords escape via Earth. But as for actually playing a, a part in the actual Time War, this is a pretty great story to allow it to be featured in. Next up is probably my favourite War Doctor story of the first four box sets, The Eternity Cage. This is just a really cracking and entertaining story. It's got the Sontarans in it, and as we know from Series 4's two parts, the Sontaran Stratagem and the Poison Sky, the Sontarans weren't allowed to fight in the Time War, though they seem to want to. Um, being Sontarans, because they're a warrior race, race and they love war, they would have loved to have joined the Time War. In this story, initially, it seems that they want to join forces with either the Time Lords or the Daleks. But later, it's revealed that they just want to open a third front and fight both sides. And Sontarans don't usually really have the technology that would enable them to win those battles. However, they've managed to capture a Time Lord in a Eternity Cage, in his Eternity Cage, which is usually stored for storing pr uh, for prisoners, but he used it as more of an escape capsule following a battle. The Sontarans found it and they manipulated it to um, ha help them be technologically advanced in Time War. And so they capture Cardinal Illustria and the Tyre Dalek um, Time Strategist and attempt to have um, attempt to open up a third front, a Sontaran front, um, in the Time War. And they've also taken control of a planet where they've got Illustria, Illust um, Illustria and later the Time Lord Strategist held prisoner. And the Docs and a team of uh, Time Lords, including Illustria's aide. Um, Helena, played by Honeysuckle Weeks, they have to infil they infiltrate the planet and they team up with street urchin Kalen, played by Josh Bolt, who's one of my favourite supporting characters from this, um, of this series, alongside Helena and also Lara Zanis. And also Dan Starkey is amazing as General Fesk and the Sontarans. He is brilliant, although I am a bit disappointed they use a picture of Christopher Ryan Sontaran uh, rather than a Dan Starkey Sontaran. But still, Dan Starkey does a brilliant job in this story. He, it's a, he's absolutely brilliant. And overall, it's just a really great fun adventure. The science makes a lot of sense, and it's um, it's a really gr and it's a great story where the, the characters have to go on this rescue mission, and then they discover the truth of the Sontaran's power. And it's just an absolute... A great story. Really, really recommend getting this box set just for this story alone. On the other hand, Eye of Harmony is a bit of a letdown. It might be the weakest finale of the five box sets so far. Um, but before I go into talking about this story, I've got to spoil the ending of the second one. So throughout the Eternity Cage, there was... Um, presumptions that there might be a traitor within the Time Lord ranks. Um, one of the Time Lords believes that it might have been Caden who's helping them, but it turns out it's, um, well, initially it's revealed that Time Lord Tech was the, um, so Tyrants detected Time Lord technology, but later it's also revealed that there was a Dalek agent also in the Time Lord ranks, and it turns out it's, um, Elystra's aide, Helena, who was a pretty great character in the first two stories, and getting quite a lot to do in the second. However, at the end of the second story, she is revealed to be the traitor, and she goes pretty nuts at the end. She's um, only a couple weeks, does a great job in the role, but she's really great. She's brilliant when she goes all evil at the end of this episode and throughout parts of this um, third story. Um, and I think it's a pretty good twist with revealing that it's Helena, a character we've come to like as and believe as an ally. Um, especially over the second episode, not so much the first, she had a small appearance in the first episode, but over the course of the second episode, we got to believe they were a, um, a promising ally to the Doctor and this thriller. However, of course, that's how um, all best twists are handled, and Helena is our villain for episode three. Unfortunately, the story itself isn't quite as great. Helena's plan is to take Cardinal Willis really into the Battle TARDIS of the Time Lord who was used in the Eternity Cage to power the Sontaran stuff, and she plans to blow up the Eye of Harmony to erase the Time Lords from history, whilst the War Doctor and Kaelin 
try to get down there to try and stop her, and the Daleks have ulterior motives for helping her out doing this. Um, my main disappointment with this story is that Helena's motivations is mainly revenge, but it's also quite, it's a petty revenge, as she, she her, her family were against the Time War. They were, like, conscient, not conscientious um, against us. They just didn't, didn't agree with it. And her grandfather died trying to help fight in the Time War, and he was against it from the start. So she's pretty pissed at the Time Lords for just having the Time War in general. And because her grandfather died whilst fighting in the Time War, so she's decided to team up with the Daleks and attempt to try and erase the Time War from existence by erasing the Time Lords from existence. And yeah, that's the motivation. It's just um, the family was betrayed by the Time Lords, so she goes all evil on them, on the Time Lords. And the, 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 the plan is a bit convoluted. Um, she somehow needed to get Cardinal Listrilla or a member of the high of the Time Lord War Command or High Council into a um, battle TARDIS or a TARDIS with an Eye of Harmony so that she can blow up the Time Lords and it wasn't and her plan it doesn't quite match what the Daleks wanted so she feels betrayed. So it's a bit of a mess. And alongside that, the Doctor and Kaylin are just running through some corridors. There is a nice reference to Jenny to the center of the TARDIS where they find this room with these uh, glass light things attached to something, which we like in described as like in the room from Journey to the Center of the TARDIS, with those things. Um, but it's it's just a bit of a disappointing story. I found it a bit bland. The, the start of the episode was pretty cool with the um, war fighters from the planet and um, Kaylin came from joining the Time Lords in fighting off the Daleks, and also the War Doctor um, being ejected from the TARDIS at the end of the episode, and Illustria and Kaylin having to bring him back on board. The TARDIS was pretty cool. And the ending is pretty interesting, when they crash the battle TARDIS in, onto an unknown planet, and the Doctor and Illustria are stuck from Gallifrey, uh, stuck a long way from Gallifrey, which kickstarts the events of the next box set. And also... Uh, Helena does turn good at the end, or she does redeem herself and help stop um, the Daleks. And but sadly, Kaylin does die after he accidentally he's accidentally shot. Um, but yeah, the story just is a is a bit underwhelming. Not really much actually does happen, and uh, Helena's motivation is kind of a bit weak for a series finale. And uh, it just comes down to just being a little bit of a letdown, which is sad because all of the other series fina series finales of the War Doctor all these box sets are great. They're pretty great finales, and especially the War Doctor Begins, Fortune and Fire. That one is probably my favourite story of the, of the War Doctor era so far, um, the Shadow Squad, but um, uh, with um, Eternity Cage as a close second, but this one is probably the weakest finale of the War Doctor box sets released so far, and it's a disappointing conclusion to the the third box set. This is probably why I was this, alongside the fact that I wasn't entirely certain what um, what my um, scores for the uh, second and third stories of the fourth box set was. Why I was considering whether this this one was second favorite or favorite of the first four box sets, but I think the Eternity Cage and the Shadow Vortex alone are pretty brilliant. Unfortunately, Eye of Harmony is a bit of a letdown. I think I might still say overall it's probably the strongest of the four first four box sets. But even then, it has a bit of a mediocre conclusion at the end. Whilst the next box set, Casualties of War, whilst maybe not as good overall, at least is more consistently good. And the same could be said for the first box set. The second one had a bit of a start, uh, weak start, but it got better over the course of the series. This one just has a bit of a weak ending, but the rest of it is pretty great. Um, so to do the scores, I will be giving The Shadow Vortex a 9 out of 10, The Eternity Cage a 10 out of 10, making this the first 10 out of 10 War Doctor audio story. And Agents of Chaos will get a 7 out of 10. And it might be my second least favourite story of the War Doctor era so far. Well, the War Doctor audios anyway. With Eternity Cage being my favourite of the first four box sets. And second favourite overall. And in rank and ranking them, three would be Eye of Harmony. Two would be The Shadow Vortex. One would be The Eternity Cage. Making a grand total score of 26 out of um, 30, which would come to about 8 and 2 thirds out of 10, so rounding that up would be 9 out of 10. 
Um, it's, it, like I said, it's a great box set. It's just that it has a really disappointing finale. If that finale had been a bit better, then it probably would be a phenomenal box set. But as it stands, it's just a it's just a brilliant one. Definitely the best of the first four box sets, though. However, competition has arrived from the following one, Casualties of War. The fourth and final box set to feature John Hurt, and also the final one chronologically, as these are the latest adventures of the War Doctor in audio form as of now. And with the Big Finish, with Big Finish doing the War Doctor Begins box sets, they're going to be more filling the gaps from the earlier points of the War Doctor's life, whilst these ones were more mid to later in the life. So I'll see you guys next time for the War Doctor Casualties of War. Thank you so much for watching this review of the War Doctor Agents of Chaos. I shall see you guys next time. Goodbye.